All right. So um, if you could all mute yourselves if you haven't already, um, and then I'm going to mute you all on my end as well. Um, haven't been done yet. One second. Okay. Well, good morning, you guys. Thank you for joining me. Um, this is your spirit flow, our all levels in NASA. Um, and as you guys know, I'm Daniela, and I'm glad you guys joined me this morning. Um, we are going to be moving through a sequence that focuses on the detoxification um, and immune support because this is the time for all of those things. Um, and then, as those of you who come to my classes on a regular basis know, I like to clean my classes around the yoga sutras. Um, and the sutra that I wanted to talk to today and to keep in mind as we move through the practice is a sutra that talks about the power of concentration and how when we really have this like aligned way of moving through our body, moving through our mind, moving through our heart, we're really moving in an authentic place. We're listening to all the different levels of intelligence within us that we can take that able body, that clear mind, that inspired heart, and we can apply it to whatever we're doing and we're going to be much more effective. So as we move through class today, the goal is to make sure that the movement makes sense in your body, that you're focusing on your breath, that you're moving in a way that is beneficial to you. Because the more that you concentrate on all of that feedback that your body, your breath, your mind gives you, the more that you can really utilize your power, your intention to move in a certain direction. And you're just much more likely to get whatever it is that you're looking for out of top today if you really concentrate it in your effort. So hopefully some of the cues that I give you will empower you to do that. Um, and as always, just listen to your body and make sure that you're allowing your body to rest the your breath to So that being said, we're going to get started lying down on our back. So go ahead and come to your back. And if there's any variation of a supine posture that you like, you could go there. Feet together, knees out wide might be a place to go. If there's most of us, most of the legs out long might be a nice place to go. And then you can just relax your arms, either down by your sides or if there's a place in your body that you'd like to place your hands. You can bring some energy and some attention there. Close your eyes and take a few moments to focus on your breath. And breathing in and out through the nose. Maybe counting your breath. Three count in, four count out. Giving yourself this time to align your mind, your breath, and your body. And when your mind, your breath, and your body are aligned, then you're just more concentrated within your experience and you're more effective in whatever work that you do. After you feel like you've created a little bit more of a rhythm, a little bit more of a cadence with your breath, I invite you to add in so an inhale breath. So stretch your arms overhead, circle at the wrist, circle at the feet. Maybe you take little stretches with one arm, with one leg. Maybe you arch the back a lot. And then gently exhale to draw your knees into your chest. And you can rock side to side. And take a few circles with the knees. And then bring your shins parallel to the sky. Stretch the arms out. Palms can face up. You can bend at the elbows for the length of the toes. You know that you tend to have SI joint pain. You might want to place a block in between the toes. Otherwise, as you exhale, lower your knees over towards the left. See if they can hover towards the elbow. And inhale, draw your knees back up to the elbow. Exhale over to the right, hover your knees towards the elbow. Inhale, back up to center. Exhale over to the left. Inhale, center. 
exhale to the right. Inhale, center. Exhale over to the left. And then if you'd like, the knees can come all the way down to the earth. Draw the back of the right shoulder towards the mat, gaze over the right arm. The knees don't reach the earth, you can always place them on a block. Low belly draws up and in. Down of the head reaches towards the back of your mat. Keep squeezing the inner thighs, inviting the knees are towards the elbow. Deep breath here, in through the nose, out through the nose, that is why Tony on, that is purifying to the breath, makes our breathing effective and efficient. Inhale back to center, knees over the belly, and then exhale, knees all the way over the right. And again, the knees can come all the way down to the earth or down to the block to the feet are too far away. Gaze can stay neutral, straight up to the sky, or the gaze can come over the left arm. Soften the shoulders down away from the ears, broaden through the collarbones. See if that upper body can become a little softer. And really focus on the effort in the lower body, squeezing the inner thighs, low belly up and your knees drawing towards that right elbow. Inhale, turn back through center. As you exhale, place your feet down onto the earth, and hip hips and parallel. Arms by your sides, keep the gaze straight up. Root down into your feet. Inhale, roll up one vertebra at a time. Hips to the side, drop into your collarbone. Exhale, lower down one vertebra at a time. Again, inhale, lift up. Exhale to lower down. And one more time, inhale to lift up. Okay, lifting. You can keep the hands where they are or interlace the hands underneath you. You should move the shoulders in. We're still at the beginning of practice. It's okay if your back bend isn't intense or glamour. Just focus on the integrity of the posture. So inner thighs strong, knees tapping forward, chest lifting towards the chin, back of the head rooted, so your neck is long. Deep breath in, float the hips a little higher. Then release your hands, and as you exhale one vertebra at a time, gently lower all the way down to the mat. Once you get there, invite your knees back into the chest, gently rock side to side, and begin to rock up and down the length of your spine until you can pause on your sit bones. Toes on the mat, low belly up and in, we're taking a Vasana boat posture, shoulders down and away from your ears. Float your feet, bringing your chins parallel to the sky. Hands can stay behind the calf, or you could outstretch bottoms forward. Think about drawing your thighs towards your belly, your belly towards your thigh, and then lift through the front of the head as the shoulders to the head. Take a deep breath in, and then exhale, cross at your ankles, rock forward to your table top. Bring your shoulders over your wrists, your hips over your knees, and spread your fingers really wide. Inhale, breath, allow the belly to soften, pull the hips back in space for cow posture. Exhale, round the spine, chin to chest, umbrella your upper back to the shoulders down. Inhale, soften the belly, maybe lift the gaze, stretch through the heart. Exhale, belly in, power in the arms, spread through the fingers. One more time, inhale, let the belly soften, lift the heart. Exhale to gently round. And come back to center. Step your feet back into a high plank. If you feel lowering down to the knees is more supportive for you, you can go there. Take a breath in, press the mat away, pull low belly in. And then keeping that integrity in the core, exhale, bend the elbows, and slowly, slowly, slowly lower to the earth. Once you get there, forehead comes to the mat, tap your feet down and walk your hands by the ribs. Press into your feet, inhale, elevate your heart, move your shoulders down and away from the ear. Gaze is towards the top of the mat. Exhale, lower down, heart, forehead to the ear. Again, inhale, baby cobra. Lift the heart. You could lift the hand. Exhale to lower down. And one more time, inhale to lift. Pull the shoulders back for a little bit more intensity in the back end. Hands on either side of the mat. Press into the finger pads and then elevate the heart even more. Imagine that your hip bones are stuck in mud, but you're trying to 
pull your sternum forward towards the top of your mat. You could stay here or as you exhale, just one shoulder twist to the left. Inhale, lift back up. Bring the left shoulder twist to the right. Inhale, back up. Find a little bit more length. As you exhale, lower all the way down onto the belly. Inhale through hands and knees, tabletop position. Then separate the knees wide, hips back towards your heels for child posture. Outstretch the arms, let your forehead soften down to the earth. And just take a few moments here to breathe into the back of the heart. Option to unite the palms, thumbs to the nape of the neck, elbows inch forward to get a little bit deeper into your tricep and into the lateral line of your foot. Keep the breath full and steady in through the nose, out through the nose. And please know that you can always come back to this shape, child posture, or lying down on your back or taking a seat or anything else that you need whenever your body tells you that that's where you need to go. So part of our concentration is concentrating on listening to the feedback that we're getting from our body. Next inhale breath, find your tabletop. And we're going to make our way into our first down dog. So for those of you who'd like to use blocks, you can bring blocks on the low height underneath your hands. Spread the fingers really wide, tuck your toes, and then lift your head. You can pedal out through your feet. Let the head and the neck relax. Maybe you begin to sway the hips side to side. Even widen your feet as wide as the long edges of the mat. Notice that the shoulders tend to hunch up, soften the shoulders down. Rebend into your elbows a little bit. You want external rotation of the shoulders, which means these soft parts of your elbows are pointing forward, the bony parts are pointing back. Now from here, we're going to shorten the stance. So take your stance maybe a step forward. Keep lengthening the sit bones back. Then inhale the right arm forward. Exhale, right hand to the outside of your left ankle or calf. Keep squeezing the inner thighs and grounding through the heels as you twist. Notice if you're using your bicep to pull into the twist. And instead, think about using your core, your oblique. And then you're just supporting the twist of the arm rather than twisting it. Notice if you tend to move the hip. Keep squeezing the inner thighs, tacking especially that left hip back. And inhale, re-extend, right arm forward. And exhale, replace it onto the block or onto the air. Inhale, stretch your left arm forward. Exhale, the twist. Bring your hands to the outside of the ankle on the right. And the gaze can come under that right arm twist. Again, notice the positioning of the hip. And then notice what's going on in that right hand. Make sure you're still spreading the hand a lot, pressing into the finger pads, activating through the arm musculature. One more breath here. That exhale will take you deeper into the twist, again, letting that twist come from the belly rather than the Inhale, re-extend your arm. And then as you exhale, step your feet behind your wrist for your rag bar. You take your block off the top of the mat for now. Bend the knee, confuse into the crook of your elbow. Head relaxes down, maybe you should hit yes or no. You can sway forward and back from the heels to the ball mounds of your feet. You could even release the hands all the way down and just let gravity take it. And then when you feel ready and there's no rest, we'll inhale to a halfway lift, hands to chin, or taking the hands to the blocks on the tall height. Crown of the head reaches forward, sit bones extend back, low belly draws up. Exhale, soften belly twist up. Again, inhale, lift up. Exhale, gently release. And one more time, inhale to lift. And exhale, gently lower. Your feet can stay as they are, or you can bring the big toes to touch with a sliver of space between your heels. Inhale, stretch your arms all the way up to the sky, get nice and tall. Unite the palms as you exhale, draw your hands to your heart. Soften the shoulders down away from the ears. Keep gentle pressure into the hands so your elbows are out. 
And then take a moment to just settle back into your breath, breathe in through the nose, out through the nose. Bend your knees, sink your weight back into your heels. Inhale, stretch your arms forward. You stick up in chair posture. See if you could lift the toes, spread the toes. Exhale, switch open to the right, right arm back, left arm forward. Inhale, come back through center. Exhale, left arm back, right arm forward. With the breath, inhale, center. Exhale to the right. Inhale, center. Exhale to the left. Inhale, center. Exhale to the right. And one more time. Inhale, center. Exhale to the left. Inhale, come back to center. As you exhale, swim the arms back. Front of the head reaches forward. Imagine you're holding something heavy in your hand. with a tricep to activate. Then inhale up onto your tippy toes. Challenge the balance of the ankles. Sink your hips low. You could reach back, interlace, gently press the muscles back. If you are taking the interlace, I would recommend taking the awkward grip. Just to kind of switch out the way you normally do the posture, build new muscle memory. Then release your heels down. Inhale, rise all the way to standing, unraveling the arms. Maybe you move into the central back bend, just like a forward. Exhale, fold, keep the neck and forward. Inhale, halfway lift. And then as you exhale, you're going to step back with your left foot. Lock will frame that front foot if you have them. Soften the back knee down to the air. Front knees at 90. Inhale, stretch both ends up to the sky. Think of having a neutral spine. So rather than jumping into the low back, knit the ribs in. Squeeze the inner thighs, arms high. Exhale, switch open to the right. Right hand can come behind you. Left hand to the outside of the knee. Once again, angle the tailbone down and draw the low belly in as you gaze over that back shoulder. Soften down into that front foot, maybe offering just a little bit more of a stretch into the top of your left side. Inhale, both arms back up. Exhale, release the hands onto the block. As you inhale, activate your back leg. Crown of the head reaches forward. Turn the back foot flat. And then as you inhale, open up into star posture. The heels and toes out, stretch the arms in opposite direction. As you exhale, pivot the feet and fold forward into soft area. Crown of the head draws down towards the earth. And you can stay here, or we're going to twist to the right again. So your left hand's going to come to the outside of the right foot. You can stretch the right arm forward. And then allow for your weight. So travel slowly into the ball mounds of your feet as you elevate the hips a little bit more. Then inhale, gently come back up onto your fingertips. And then as you exhale, we're going to bend into the left knee and turn to the left. I encourage you to take your blocks with you. Soften your back knee down to the earth. So we're going to take that sense a little sequence one more time. Inhale, reach your arms up to the sky. Squeeze in our thigh. Exhale, twist to the left. Drawing the right hand to the knee. Left hand behind you, and the gaze gently moves over the shoulder. You keep sustaining that activation in our thighs. And if you want to lean a little bit further forward into your left foot, we'll get more of a quadricep and the last step on top of that right leg. One more round of breath. And then inhale, come back up through center, both arms high. Exhale your hands down onto the back. Inhale to activate that back leg. And then once again, we're going to pivot towards the long edge of the back. Taking your breath in, pull the heart forward. Exhale to fold. Stay here or reach your right hand to the outside of your left foot and take that gentle twist. Stretch the left arm over. Notice if the breath is shifting or changing already. Can you recommit to the same power of breath you had at the beginning of class? 
And if you need to, just noticing you need to dial down the posture or take a breath in a different shape to reconnect to your rhythm. Come back up to the fingertips on your inhale. And then we'll pivot towards the front of the mat, bend the right knee, and that low bench. Step your back foot up to meet your front, halfway lift on an inhale. And then exhale to fold. Bend the knees, inhale to chair, reach your arms up. Exhale, twist open to your legs. Inhale, come back up through center. Exhale, twist open to your left. Inhale, come back up through center. Exhale, swim the arms back, come to your tippy toes. Ground the heels. Inhale, stretch all the way up, maybe a bunch of back bends. Exhale, eye forward. Inhale, halfway lift. And then exhale, step back into your high plank. You can always move straight from your high plank to your down dog, and you're always welcome to use your block. So in high plank, you're pressing the mat away from you, low belly draws in. The transition to down dog would just be to exhale your hips up and back. You'd like to move through Chaturanga Dandasana. As you exhale, bend your elbows to 90. Come to the top of your feet. Inhale to upward facing dog, floating the hips and heart forward. Exhale, roll over your toes, downward facing dog. And then breathe. In through the nose, out through the nose. Next, inhale, breath, stretch your right leg to the sky. Exhale, draw your right knee towards your left elbow so you can give it a tap underneath the forces. Inhale, re extend your legs. Exhale, step all the way through into your low lunge. You can ground your back knee down just like we did a little earlier. Or for more heat in the legs, keep the back leg lifted. And inhale, both ends to the side, the high side. Once again, belly in, tailbone down. Biceps by the ears, reach up through your waist here. Exhale, breath, twist open to the right, dip the back knee. Inhale, back up. Exhale, twist to the right, dip the back knee. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, twist to the right, dip the back knee. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, release your hands down to the block. You can take the blocks onto the tall height. As you inhale, lengthen your front leg. Pull the right hip back, left hip forward, so you're still getting a nice long spine from hips to crown while you're working into the hamstrings below the leg. Inhale, breath, twist open, right arm to the sky. Gaze up if that's comfortable, or gaze down. Root into the big toe ball mound of the right foot. High, high, high on the ball mound of the back foot. Twist open for one more breath in. And exhale, re-bend the knee. Hand to the block. Inhale, step up, top of the mat. Exhale, to fold. Bend into your knees, inhale, chair. Exhale, twist to the right. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist to the left. Inhale, reach up. Exhale to your tippy toes, arms back. Round the feet, inhale, gentle back bend. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, hands to the block. Step it back, high plank. Your transition. Flow through and we'll meet in downward facing dog on an exhale. From your downward facing dog, inhale your left leg to the sky. Exhale your left knee towards that right elbow. Inhale, re extend. Exhale, step all the way through. Back leg stays active. Inhale, reach the arms up. Think about pulling your left foot back, right foot forward, but you're stuck in mud. So there's a lot of activation in the leg. Arms elevate. Really press into the back leg, high on the ball and onto the foot. The glutes activate. Exhale, with your back knee, twist open to your left. Inhale, back up. Exhale, dip the knees up. And one more time, inhale, lift. Exhale, dip the knees up. Inhale, back up. Exhale, hands down to the block. 
lengthen the front leg, adjust the legs if you need to, sometimes stepping that back foot up is helpful. Inhale breath, reach left arm to the sky. Now a lot of times that left hip is going to want to bump out, so if you can pull that left hip back. Use your bottom arm as leverage and rotate, right ribcage under left. Really stretch upward so you feel your arm bone moving out of the shoulder socket. Breath in. And exhale, release the hand, bend the knee. Lift forward, step up on your inhale breath. Exhale to sit. Bend your knees, inhale, chair. Exhale, twist to the right. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist left. Inhale, center. Exhale, to your tippy toes, arms back. Ground your heels, inhale, lift up, gentle back bend. And exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, hands to the mat. We'll step back to our high plank. Take a moment in the high plank. You can take chaturanga or bend the elbows to 90. Step back up. Exhale, chaturanga. Come to the top of the feet. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, roll over your toes, downward facing dog. Okay, we're going to move through that sequence just one more time on each side. Feel just a little bit more heat. If you'd like to take a break and not flow through, you can come down to your knee, hips to your heel, or head down. And just breathe here. For those of you who are going to flow one more time with me, we'll meet in the downward facing dog. Inhale your right leg to the sky. Exhale towards the left elbow. Inhale, re-extend. Exhale, step through. Inhale, both arms up. Exhale, dip the back knee down. Inhale up. Exhale, dip and twist. One more time, inhale. Exhale, dip and twist. Inhale, back up. Exhale, hands to the block. Inhale, lengthen that front leg. Stretch the right arm high. Exhale, rebend into the knee. Hand to the block. Step up on your inhale. Exhale, to fold. Bend the knees. Inhale, chair. Exhale, sister. Inhale, center. Exhale, to the left. Inhale, center. Exhale, to the toes, arms back. Round, inhale, lift up, central back bend. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, plant the hands, step back. Option to move straight to down dog. Come down, come up, chaturanga. Down dog on your exhale back. Inhale, left leg to the sky. Exhale, opposite elbow. Inhale, re-extend. Exhale, step through. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, dip the knees down. Inhale, center. Exhale, dip and twist. One more time, inhale. Exhale, dip and twist. Inhale, up. Exhale, hands down. Lengthen that front leg. Inhale, reach the left arm high. Exhale, bend the knee, hands down to you. Inhale, step up, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Bend your knees, inhale, chair. Exhale, twist right. Inhale, center. Exhale, twist left. Inhale, center. Exhale to the tippy toe. Build down, inhale, lift up. And exhale, dive forward. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, hands to the mat. We'll knee and down dog. Take your transition. Make sure you're following your breath, listening to what your body needs. Once you find your down dog, 
gently day is forward. Step through to your feet. So you just do a little bit of belly up core. Put blocks on your mat, just take them off to the side. I'm going to lower down onto the back. Bring your shins parallel to the sky. You want the knees directly over there. This is step one. Step two for just a little bit more intensity would be to lengthen your legs up to the sky. So basically imagine that you're standing on the sky. Then you're going to inhale your arms up. As you exhale, you're going to lift. Imagine you're holding something heavy. You'd like, you can even use a block. And you're going to reach the hands to the outside of your left foot. Now, a lot of us will tend to try to bring the legs towards us. Try not to do that. So you're not working your hip flexors. You're just working the core. So keep the legs straight up. Just move the block over. It doesn't matter if you don't get hit. Then inhale back to center. Ground the shoulders. Exhale over to the other side. Inhale center. Exhale crunch. 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 See if you can stay lifted and just pull the block up. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhale center. Exhale over to the left and crunch up. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhale center. Exhale, bend your knees into the chest and just rock side to side. If you ever feel like you need to release some heat, you can take a deep breath in through the nose and an open mouth exhale. One more last little bit of belly up core and parallel. If you want to supercharge the inner thighs with those adductors to work, place a block in between the thighs and squeeze that block. Then you're going to inhale your arms up to the sky. Keep these in, thumbs out. Then as you exhale, you're going to bend the elbows and see if you can tap left elbow to right knee. Then inhale back. Exhale, right elbow to left knee. Moving at your own pace. And allowing your belly to do most of the work. Yes, you're squeezing the inner thighs. Maybe the legs are being used towards the arms. But really focus on the arms the upper body moving toward the lower body. Next time you're over on the right, see if you can hold, maybe squeeze those knees in a little bit more. Feel pressure of elbow to the outside of the knee, bend the elbows in, low belly in. Then inhale back through center. Exhale, right elbow to the outside of your left knee. Again, see how much you can press the elbow into the knee, the knee back into the elbow. Squeeze the block. And then gently inhale back to center. Release the block as you exhale, knees and your Slide to slide or rocking up and down might feel nice. And rock a couple of times forward and back. And so you can practice the ankles. Find your way to your tabletop position. And shoulders over the wrist. Hips over the knee. We're just going to stretch out the shoulders really quickly before we move on. Step your hands forward. So that's the forearms come down to the earth. Forehead to the mat. Low belly up and in. Puppy posture. Breathe into the upper back. And then once again, like we did earlier in our child's posture, you can unite the palms, thumbs to the of the neck, and inch your elbows forward. Notice if the low back comes to arch and you draw the belly in and Keep that stretch more in the upper body rather than the lower body. One more breath in your puppy posture on the Hatasana. And release your hands. Set the hands under your shoulders for your people to We're going to move back into our down dog. So if you need your pop, so you like to use your pop. Find them. Inhale, tuck the toes. Exhale, lift your head. Inhale, reach your right leg to the sky. Exhale, knee towards your opposite elbow. And then if you'd like, you can thread the leg all the way through, either landing onto the back of the foot or coming all the way down onto the head. 
Flex your toes towards your face. If you are on the sit bones, twist the heart towards the right side of the mat. For those of you who are here, lift the hips, extend the top arm up and over the head. Keep twisting. See if you can keep drawing your heart towards the top left corner of the mat. If you're grounded, you're going to bring both hands down, lift the hips, and we'll all inhale, reach that right leg to the sky. Exhale, step through into your low lunge. Bring the back knee down, front knee at 90 degrees. Inhale, reach your arms up. Find your left wrist, exhale, lean into the front of your hip and stretch over to the right. So if you joined me last week, we're doing a lot of lateral side body stretching. And this week we're working in twists. A lot of times to get the most effective twist, we need the length in the side body. Take one more breath in. Exhale your elbow to the outside of your knee. Press your palms into one another, just open forward. You could stay here or activate the back leg. Come high onto the bottom round of your foot. Knees over the head. Keep lifting the heart away from the thigh. You're using your bottom elbow as leverage, but you're becoming lighter and lighter. One more breath in. Exhale, release your hands down to the earth. If the back knee isn't lifted, go ahead and lift it now. Take your blocks onto the tall height. And then as you inhale, shift your weight into the right foot. Lift your left leg for a supported warrior three. Flex your toes back towards your face. And this may be enough. If it is, please feel free to stay here. For a little bit more of a balance challenge, step your left block forward. Come high onto your fingertips. Keep pressing into your left leg. And then as you inhale, extend the right arm up. Think of one long line of energy from your heel to your crown, and then one long line of energy from that right heel all the way to your right ring finger. And take one more breath in to stretch and open. And then exhale, release your hand, release your foot, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, long spine. Exhale to fold. We're going to meet in down dog. You can take your transition, chaturanga, or even just simply stepping back into down dog. In my own practice, because my wrists tend to speak to me a lot, if I'm doing chaturangas a lot, high pumps a lot, a lot of times I'll just step straight back to down dog and take that excess pressure off the shoulder. In the Inhale your left leg to the sky. Exhale knee towards opposite elbow. And then again, you can stay lifted on that foot. Stay here. Or slide all the way through. Even if you're down, you want to keep your back leg really active. Front foot is flexed as well. Hands on the block, shifting to the left if you're grounded. If you're lifted, use your obliques to draw the hips higher to the sky. Top arm's going to reach up and over toward that top left corner of the mat. Think about touching your pinky finger to the earth. You know, wherever you are, you know, place the hands on the blocks or on the earth. Elevate those hips and inhale, left leg to the sky. Exhale, step all the way through into your low lunge. Back knee grounds to begin with, just so you get your alignment. Inhale, both arms up to the sky. Find your right wrist. And then exhale, find that side body stretch. And you can even lean forward just a little bit into the left foot. As long as you're not collapsing into the low back, as long as there's space here. And then allow for the breath to create the space in the side body, all the way from the right knee to the right fingertip. Exhale, breath, elbow to the outside of your knee. Plant the palm. Lift the heart. Option to activate the back leg, lift the thigh away from the earth. Keep packing your hip back. Low belly in, float the torso away from the thigh. High on the ball mound of your back foot. You're gripping with the toes. See if you can lift them, root into the big toe, pinky toe, and heel of that front foot. Take just one more round of breath. Heart opens to the side, to the sky. And then exhale, release your hands down the block. Step the block forward or just hands on the earth. 
And as you inhale, elevate that back leg, crown forward, go back. Now check in with your breath, right? If the breath is stifled, if it's hard to breathe and moving further, probably isn't the best use of your energy. So stay here, focus on strengthening the left leg. For those of you who are ready to take it one step further, step your right block off to the right. Inhale, extend your left leg to the side. Again, there's one long line of energy from the crown to heel, and then another one from the left heel to lift the left hand. And gentle bend in your standing leg. You stretch to the outside of your left foot. Breath in to stretch. Exhale, release your left hand down and then your right foot down. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, to fold. You can move through your chaturanga if you'd like to, or step straight back to downward facing dog. Take a few breaths just to settle into your body to notice how the body is responding to movement. And then from here, you're going to walk your hands back towards your feet, finding a forward fold. Bend your knees, inhale, each of us in our chair posture. Exhale, hands to heart and twist. Left elbow to the outside of your right knee. Keep your hips back. You can stay here or open your arms to fly. We're going to be working into side crow on Saturday. So if you want to join for that, you can go there. If you already know your side crow, you're welcome to go there. Or stay in the twist. Weight is in the heels, toes float, low belly up and in. Then root into the heels. Inhale, reach all the way up. Exhale, dive forward. Bend the knees, inhale, chair. Exhale, hands through heart and twist to your left. Right elbow to the outside of your left knee. Open the heart, weight is in your heel. Arms can open. Once again, you're off into side throw. I like to get you to look down at my toes rather than gazing up. It just feels better in my neck. And then I can really focus my energy on the inner thighs. I can concentrate my energy on what's going on because I'm not distracted or looking somewhere that doesn't serve me. Right? And that's the whole idea of concentration. Where are you putting your energy? Where are you putting your attention? Exhale, feel good. Walk your hands forward. Come into your down dog. You want to flow through your chikananda for just a little bit more heat. You have the time, the option to do that. Otherwise, three big breaths here in the down dog. Breath in. Breath out. Breath in. Breath out. And one more time. Breath in. Breath out. And inhale, stretch your right leg to the sky, preparing for half movement. Exhale your right knee behind your right leg. Top of your back foot comes down. Flex your right toes towards your face. Squeeze your inner thighs and see if you can lift the heart a little bit. You're welcome to use your blocks as you exhale. Fold over that front leg. Maybe you come down onto your forearm. Maybe you come all the way down to your. If you want to add a twist into your half pigeon, you can take your left hand, thread it underneath your body, and land on your left cheek. If that's too much, then you don't have to go there. You could even place the block under your belly and have a little bit more of a restorative pigeon. So just noticing what you need at this point in your practice as we open the outer head. And it's okay to find one variation for a few breaths and then realize that you need a different variation. You can always switch it up.
to take just one more round of breath in whatever pigeon you found yourself in. And then gently come back up onto your palm. And then take your left leg and the left leg around. So the sole of your left foot is on the outside of your right knee. I'm just going to turn towards the camera so it's a little easier for you guys to see. Left hand behind you, inhale, reach your right arm high. Exhale to twist, draw your elbow to the outside of the knee. And then gaze back towards that left shoulder. Pull your left hip down, belly towards thigh, thigh towards belly. It's like you can unite your thumb and your first finger for a mudra. And this is just another way to bring your attention into the body. You can notice what it is that you're doing with your hands. Sometimes you get so caught up what's going on in the spine. But we'll forget what's going on in our hands or in our face or in our feet. The entire body is always engaged in the process. And we concentrate a little bit more deeply with the details and nuances of how we're facing our bodies. And as you exhale, mouth kind of twist to the other side. And face back forward. Take that left leg, extend it back. Tuck your toes. Inhale, three-legged down dog, right leg to the sky. Exhale, bend the knees back to hip. You can take a few circles here. If flipping the dog is in your practice, you're welcome to flip the dog. And you have this more of a counter stretch for that right hip. Then exhale, release your right foot down. Inhale, stretch the left leg to the sky. Exhale, find your half kidney. Left knee behind the left wrist. Top of your back foot reach down. And once again, we're lifting the heart to finding where the body feels most supported. If that means using blocks, go for it. For the twist, you can reach the right arm underneath the left. Come onto your right cheek and extend that left arm out. And our sides are different. So you may notice that one side is quite open to doing a really deep variation, a twisted variation, and the other side doesn't quite feel supported, or it makes it harder to breathe on one side than the other. And it's okay to find these challenges to be a sympathy from side to side. That's just life, right? Life is different day to day, breath to breath moment to moment. And the goal is to just listen to that feedback to see what it is that you need to do in order to be effective. Because if we're forcing something and we're not moving skillfully or mindfully, and a lot of times that energy is wasteful, it burns us out, it isn't being applied in a concentrated manner. And without the concentration, the awareness of what we're doing, what we're doing just tends to be incomplete, not as full or successful. And wherever you are, let's just take one more round of breath into the outer left foot. And then just walk your hands back towards your foot. And form your right leg around so it can see outside of your knee. And again, I'm going to turn towards the camera so you can see my alignment. You want to make sure your hip is leaning down. Right hand behind you, inhale, stretch the left arm high. And then exhale. The gaze comes over the left shoulder. Keep utilizing that back arm to lift the spine. So instead of leaning back into it, you're elevating yourself. And then from that elevation, you're able to just utilize the muscles of the core. And then if you want that mudra, so finger to thumb, then just to add a little bit more awareness into all the different areas of the practice. And gently exhale, mouth counter with two other side. Looking forward again, just swim your right leg back. The toes, plant the palms, and inhale. Elevate your left knee. Yes. Exhale, bend the knees, back the hip. Circles in the hip joint. Bend or re extend the knee. Circles in the ankle joint. And release your left leg down. 
final downward facing dog of practice. So just breathe into it. Notice where you can add maybe a little bit more activation, so a little bit more depth. Or maybe where you can soften so that the posture is a little more easeful. Is forward, step through to your feet. We're going to move into a forward fold. I'm a huge proponent of the butterfly forward fold. That's what I'm going to guide you through. But if you want your legs together, you can take that. Or wide legged forward fold, you can take that. Knees out wide, sit bones behind you, fingertips behind the back. Take a deep breath in, elevate the heart. And then as you exhale, step forward and release. I like to use a block under my forehead because that gives me a little bit more support. We spend a lot of time activating the inner thighs, so let the knees soften outward. And then breathe into wherever you may still be feeling tightness. And this can be a lot of different places in the body. Sometimes we feel tightness in the low back. In the inner thighs, in the outer thighs, in the upper back, neck. And you just use your deep breath to wash some space over those areas that are constricted. And then very gently begin to walk your hands back and lift up out of the forward fold. Use your hands to unite the knees to touch. Make sure the feet are all the way to the top of the mat. Turn your palms to face up. And then lower all the way down onto your back. Once you get down onto your back, Draw your feet towards your sit bones and then out wide. Let the knees come to touch like a little teepee. Low those in. And you can windshield wipe over the legs here. Next time your knees are falling over to the left, keep them there. You can even walk your right foot over to the right a little bit more. You can stay here. Maybe you use a block under the left knee. Or flex the left foot, place it on top of the right knee, and invite the knee forward. Press the knee back into the foot. Feel length through the side body. If you want a little bit more length, the right arm reaches up, back of the hand on the earth. You want to make sure there's no pain in the knee. If there is pain in that right knee, either press up into the left foot more, or just let go of this altogether. Bring the left foot down, set the knee to the front so far back. The goal isn't so much that the knee is coming down as much as the knee is moving forward and you get the extension in your right hip. Wherever you are, just one more round of breath. And release the arm, release the feet. And we'll just wipe the wipe of the legs over to the other side. It's an awesome to walk your left foot out. You have the block, so if the block under that right knee is what the body needs, go for it. Otherwise, right foot onto left knee. Option to inhale that left arm up, back of the hand to the earth. And then think about your arm and your knee moving in opposite directions. And all the space that you're breathing in. If the back is arching a lot, low belly and so the spine. So instead of just being a really intense back bend, we're focusing more on just creating space around the hip joint itself. And bring both feet down onto the mat. Invite your knees into your head. Open the knees wide for happy baby. Hands can come behind the knee creases. They can come from the ankles. Flex your toes towards your face. You can also take feet under your toe. 
Let your elbows into the knees and back into the elbows. And if rocking side to side feels natural, we're extending the leg to the other if you want. Take one more for them. And then invite the knees back into the side. Notice if there's any last movement your body really needs, like if you find there for a while, you're welcome to stay there. Otherwise, draw the knees and give yourself a squeeze, curl into the tiniest little ball you can, back into the notes. And then as you exhale, release your legs out long. Arms by your sides with the palms facing up. Back of your head on the earth, chin to chest. Roll your shoulders underneath you, arms down by your side. Final savasana, your final relaxation. Allow the body to melt heavy into the earth. Allow your breath to return to its natural shape. And give yourself these last few moments of class to just soften. Now, as always, with these virtual classes, you're more than welcome to stay here for longer. You can take your savasana for as long as you need. For those of you who would like to be guided out, I invite you to start by taking a deep breath in through the nose. And open mouth exhale. And then come back to a more rhythmic breath as you circle ankles, toes, wrists. Maybe a really big good morning stretch. Eventually, bind your knees and towards your chest and then to your right or your left side. And take a moment to adjust to you. And then in your own time, back up to a seat and sit on a block. You're simply sitting on the earth, whatever feels best in your body. Taking a moment in gratitude for showing up and for concentrating. Thanks right? for taking the time to get the body, the breath, the mind, the heart all in one state. Because it's when we have this alignment, this health and well being on all the different layers of our human experience, that we're just more effective as humans. And being effective is just so important and so powerful, especially in times like this, where we're being challenged to move in different ways, to think in different ways, to engage in different ways. So simply showing up and doing your best in a 50 minute time period, concentrating your effort on improving and growing is such a worthwhile and such an important thing. So thank you for taking it. I invite you to join me in a cleansing breath to feel our practice. So as you're ready, you make the hands at your heart. Take a deep breath in through the nose, fills at the top of your lungs. And open mouth release. Inhale your thumbs to your third eye. And exhale the bow forward. The light in me honors the light in you. It's always an honor and privilege to be there to practice with you. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you guys so much. Um, I'm going to end the recording first. And then if you guys want to unmute yourself to say hi or whatever, feel free. Again, thank you guys so much.
Hello?